Hello there. In this video, we will be learning about applications of dimension analysis. To be precise, we'll be learning about the first application of dimension analysis that is to check the consistency of dimensional equation. But before we proceed, let us first understand what do we mean by dimensional analysis and what is the dimension of any physical quantity. So, the dimensional analysis is a method used in physics and engineering to analyze the relationship between different physical quantities by identifying their dimensions such as length, mass, time, etc. So, you must be familiar with the dimensional formula. So, in this video, you will be learning about how do we use that dimensional formula in order to solve the real life problems. For an example, you must be familiar with density is equal to mass per unit volume. So mass can be just written as m. So the dimension of mass is m and the dimensional formula for volume can be written as LQ. So in a way I can say that the dimensional formula for density in the terms of MLT would be m raised to the power 1, l raised to the power negative 3 and t raised to the power 0. So this is what we call the dimensional formula of density. Now in this video, we'll be learning about how do we use this dimensional formula in order to solve the real life problems. So a dimensional formula represents a physical quantity in terms of the fundamental quantities like in these ones, I have used mass, length and time. These are the fundamental physical quantities. So just as a recap, fundamental physical quantities are the one that are independent of each other. Now let's understand what are the applications of dimensional analysis. So there are multiple applications of dimension analysis. Some of them are to check the consistency of the dimensional equation. And this is what we will be studying in this particular video. The others are to derive the relationship between physical quantities and physical phenomenon to change units from one system to another. For an example, if you know the unit of one physical quantity in SI system, uh, you can convert it into CGS system. How would you do that? That also comes under the application of dimension analysis. But for this particular video, we will be focusing on the first application of dimensional analysis that is to check the consistency of the dimensional equation. Now, first of all, let's understand what do we mean by to check the consistency of the dimensional equation. So in the easiest terms, if I represent, it would be something, let's say you go to the market and you ask the shopkeeper that, hey shopkeeper, give me 5 kilogram of sugar plus give me 2 meters of thread. Now, tell me one thing, can you add these two things together? This kilogram is the unit of mass and this meter is the unit of length. Can you add mass with length? not possible right so that is what we'll be discussing in the consistency of the dimensional equation so in a way we can say that these two things are not consistent with each other you can't add them you can't subtract them so the basic things like addition subtraction greater than equal to less than these things you cannot do with the physical quantities that are inconsistent with each other for an example i can't say 2 meters is greater than 5 kilogram. So this is not a correct way to say that. In order to check the consistency of any equation, we can split the process into four steps. The first step is write the dimensional formulas of all the physical quantity in the equation. So we'll do this with the help of an example. So this is the first step that you need to do. The second is substitute the dimensional formulas into the equation. The third is simplify the dimensions on both side of equation and finally compare the dimensions on both side. So if the dimensions on left hand side is equal to the dimensions on right hand side, we say that the equation is consistent or dimensionally correct. So if they are same, the equation is dimensionally consistent, otherwise inconsistent and need to be checked and corrected. Now you might be familiar with Newton's second law of motion that is F is equal to rate of change of linear momentum. I can write this as mv minus mu divided by t. I can also write this as m v minus u divided by t. That could be written as m into a where a is the acceleration, 
u is the initial velocity v is the final velocity t is the time and m is the mass and f is the force now force is measured in newtons or in other words we can also write it as kilogram meter per second square so the dimensional formula for force can be written as m raised to the power 1 l raised to the power 1 t raised to the power negative 2 now let's see the dimension of mass the dimension of mass is m raised to the power 1 the dimension of acceleration is m raised to the power 0 l raised to the power 1 t raised to the power negative 2 now combining these two things i can say that the dimension of m times a will come out to be m1 l1 t raised to the power negative 2 now let's compare the dimensions so in the lhs the dimension of mass is 1 in the rhs the dimension of mass is also 1 in lhs the dimension of length is 1 in rhs it is also 1 the dimension of t is negative 2 in lhs it's negative 2 in rhs so in a way we can say that this particular equation that is f equals to m times a is dimensionally consistent let's prove the dimensional consistency of second equation of motion that is s equals to ut plus half a t square in this equation s is the displacement u is the initial velocity t is the time a is the acceleration and t again is the time so s is nothing but displacement so what would be the dimension of displacement it would be just l raised to the power one that's it let's find the dimension of ut where u is the speed so the uh, so the dimensional formula for the speed is l t raised to the power negative one and the dimensional formula for this t is just t so this gets cancelled so in a way i can say that the dimensional formula for ut also is l now what is the dimension of half it is just a number so it is dimensionless it doesn't has any dimension what is the dimension of acceleration it is l1 t raised to the power negative 2 multiply by t square since here it is also t square so this gets cancelled so the dimension of half a t square also comes out to be l1 now let's check so l raised to the power 1 l raised to the power 1 l raised to the power 1 so in a way we can say that the dimensions of s ut and half a t square are the same and that is why we are able to apply these operations that is equal to and plus so all these operations that is plus minus greater than equal to less than these are only applicable when the equations are dimensionally consistent now here's a question for you instead of this equation if i had this equation s equals to 2 ut plus 5 a t square would it also be dimensionally consistent or not just try to figure it out think for a moment of course yes right because in this particular equation half was not having any dimension it was dimensionless so instead of half if it was 5 or on instead of 1 ut it was 2 ut then it would still be dimensionally correct but it is obviously not the correct statement so this is one of the limitation of this particular thing because its constants are dimensionless so whatever are the constants so we will not be able to figure out whether those are the correct constants in the equation or not this dimensional consistency can also help you find the dimension of unknown quantities for an example i write this equation called x initial that is initial displacement equals to the final displacement multiply by sine into a t where xi is the initial displacement xf is the final displacement t is the time and a is any constant and we want to find the dimension of this constant now xi would have a dimension of just length because it is displacement so l only xf will also have a dimension of l so that would mean that the dimension of this entire thing should be one so it should not have any dimension so to say so the dimension of this thing should be m raised to the power zero l raised to the power zero and t raised to the power zero and that actually makes sense because sine of anything so we know that sine for an example we know that sine 90 degree equals to one so what is one what's the dimension of one it is dimensionless right so the dimension of one would be m0 l0 and t0 it would not have any dimension also the dimension of 90 degree will also be nothing so it would be m0 l0 and t0 so similarly i can say the dimension of at would be nothing so it would be a dimensionless quantity 
so i can say the dimension of a times t should be equal to m0 l0 and t0 that can only be possible if the dimension of a equals to 1 by t so that the dimension of at would be 1 by t times t that would come out to be t raised to the power 0 so the dimension of this constant is equal to t raised to the power negative 1 so this is also one type of questions that you can expect in the applications of dimensional analysis to sum it up checking the consistency of dimensional equation ensures that the physical units on both the sides of equation are compatible with each other so that you can do the operations like plus minus equal to greater than less than only when the equations are consistent with each other the second is the equation makes sense from a physical standpoint example mass on both the side balances with mass and time with time so in a way you can't add two second with five meters so this can't be possible it helps in detecting errors in the formulas or the unit conversions for an example if f was equal to m just like that f was equal to mv for an instance right so we know the dimension of f is m raised to the power 1 l raised to the power 1 t raised to the power negative 2 but in the right hand side the dimension would be m and the dimension of v would be l t raised to the power minus 1 so the equation is not dimensionally consistent so we can say that there's an error in this equation and that's why we know that f is not equal to mv rather f is equal to m times so this was one of the important applications of dimensional analysis that helps you check the consistency of the dimensional equation. I hope the video is clear to you. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.